Okay, so in this video I will uh, learn how uh, glycolysis and gluconeogenesis is regulated particularly at uh, PFK1 level and also fructose 16 bis phosphatase level. Okay, so PFK1 is the key regulatory enzyme for glycolysis whereas uh, for gluconeogenesis it is fructose 16 bis phosphatase enzyme. Okay, so both uh, PFK1 and fructose 16 bis phosphatase indirectly it will be regulated by another enzyme called PFK2. Now the PFK2 enzyme, this is phosphoructokinase 2 enzyme and this is a bifunctional enzyme so it has got uh, kinase part of it, kinase and the other is the phosphatase part of it, phosphatase. So PFK2 it has got two subunits, two sub functional subunit, kinase and the phosphatase. Now, the point to be remembered here is, the PFK2 kinase, it will be active when phosphate is not present, means it is active in dephosphorylated state. Whereas the PFK2 phosphatase, it will be active when phosphate is present over it. Okay? So, to know uh, when in which condition kinase will uh, doesn't have phosphate and in which condition phosphatase part of PFK2 has got phosphate that we will see by taking two examples of our nutritional status of the body. One is the fasting condition. Fasting condition. Other is well-fed condition. Now in fasting condition as you already know, so there will be increase in glucagon. Glucagon is increased. So, in the presence of glucagon, so as it binds to glucagon receptor and increases cyclic AMP, so there will be increase in cyclic AMP and uh, cyclic AMP is going to stimulate protein kinase A enzyme, it's going to increase protein kinase A enzyme in the body, okay. So, in fasting condition you have increased protein kinase A, that is because of increased adenylyl cyclase enzyme activity. So, since it's a kinase, protein kinase A, so it's going to add phosphate to PFK2 kinase part, phosphate is added and to PFK2 phosphatase part of also, part of it. Okay? So both these subunits now got phosphate in the presence of glucagon by protein kinase A. Okay? Phosphates are added. Now as I already told before, PFK2 kinase part it will be inactive when phosphate is present. So it is inactive and PFK2 phosphatase it will be active when phosphate is present. Okay? So now, what's the function of this? Now the phosphatase part is active now. So what is the function of this PFK2 phosphatase? So what it does? So it will convert fructose to 6 by phosphate into fructose 6 phosphate. Fructose 2,6 base phosphate is converted to fructose 6-phosphate by this phosphatase part of PFK2. Okay? Now we will move on to see what will happen in well-fed condition in connection with PFK2. So in well-fed condition, so there will be increase in glucose. So that will lead to increase in uh, insulin. And insulin, it will increase protein phosphatase enzyme protein phosphatase. So protein phosphatase is activated here in the presence of insulin. So what this protein phosphatase does, it will act on this PFK2 and removes the phosphates that are present over PFK2 which were added initially by glucagon during fasting condition. So when the person is transiting from fasting condition to well-fed condition, because of fasting he had glucagon that that increased PFK, uh, sorry, protein kinase A which added phosphate or kinase and phosphatase. Now person is in well-fed condition, he has got increased insulin, activated protein phosphatase. So he is going to remove these two phosphates from kinase and phosphatase. So phosphate is removed from this PFK2. So when phosphate is removed, so how your PFK2 looks like in the presence of uh, insulin in well-fed condition? So it will be like this, PFK to kinase and phosphatase 
and no fast weights attached because it is released. So when no fast when when the PFK2 kinase if it doesn't has fast weight, so it is in defosphorylated state, so it becomes active. Okay, and the phosphatase it will be active in phosphorylated state. Now we have removed that inorganic phosphate by protein phosphatase, so it becomes inactive. So in the presence of insulin, PFK2 kinase part is active, phosphatase part is inactive. So what this does? So PFK2 kinase it converts fructose 6 phosphate into fructose 2 6 base phosphate. So fructose 6 phosphate is now converted to fructose 2 6 bis phosphate. Okay. So now what is the function of this fructose 2 6 bis phosphate that we have? Uh, now we have seen how this fructose 2 6 bis phosphate is increased in the presence of uh, insulin and how it is decreased in the presence of glucagon. Okay. So the fructose 2 6 bis phosphate concentration it will be increased in the presence of insulin because kinase part is, part is active. Whereas fructose 2 6 bisphosphate concentration it will decrease because phosphatase part of PFK2 is active in uh, fasting condition. So fructose 6 phos 2 6 bisphosphate is converted to fructose 6 phosphate. So after knowing these basics, now we will move on to see what is the effect of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate on glycolysis because well fed condition you have a plenty of glucose. So glucose will undergo glycolysis. So glucose is converted to glucose 6 phosphate and that is converted to fructose 6-phosphate which is a reversible reaction and fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 1,6-bis-phosphate fructose 1,6-bis-phosphate and this is catalyzed by PFK1 enzyme okay? and this PFK1 enzyme is an allosteric enzyme and one of the strongest positive allosteric modulator of this PFK1 is this fructose 2 6 bisphosphate. So, it is a positive allosteric modulator on PFK1. So, insulin by keeping this PFK2 kinase active, it increases fructose 2 6 bisphosphate concentration and that is active, acting positively on PFK1, thereby fructose 6 phosphate is fastly converted into fructose 1 6 bisphosphate and hence glycolysis will go on at a faster rate. Okay. So now, what is the effect of this fructose 2 6 bisphosphate under uh, in the reverse pathway? So, reverse pathway means in fasting condition, what will happen? So, you have high concentration of lactate, lactate is high, or uh, it will be converted to say pyruvate, or pyruvate concentration is high. So, lactate to pyruvate or pyruvate to lactate, it is a reversible reaction. So, because fasting condition, so you body needs glucose now, so glucagon is increased. So, pyruvate or lactate, it can be converted all the way back to glucose molecule, but there are certain irreversible reactions that we have already seen in gluconeogenesis. So, one of the irreversible reaction is the conversion of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate in glycolysis, which is a unidirectional reaction. Okay? So, if you want to take this fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate back to fructose 6 phosphate to form glucose, you need to reverse this reaction. So, there is an enzyme to do that. So, now fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate, it will be converted back to fructose 6 phosphate by fructose 1, 6 bis phosphatase enzyme. Fructose 1, 6 bisphosphatase is the one which will convert fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate to fructose 6 phosphate. Now we will move on to say what is the effect of this fructose 1, 6 bisphosphatase, sorry fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate on fructose 1, 6 bisphosphatase. So what we have seen in the welfare condition, fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate increases and that is acting positively on PFK1, glycolysis is going on. Now in well fit, sorry, fasting condition what happens, glucagon is increased, we really want to produce glucose now, so at that time, at the, uh, sorry, at the same time in well fit condition, when uh, fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate is activating PFK1, so high concentration of fructose 2, 6 bisphosphate is available in well fit condition, so it's going to negatively act on this fructose 1, 6 bisphosphatase. So, well fed condition, 
glyc glucose is plenty it has to make uh, take that glucose into glycolysis pyruvate has to form so fructose 2 6 bisphosphate which is increased by pfk2 kinase under the influence of insulin so it is activating pfk1 so at the same time it has to inhibit the reverse reaction because pfk1 is producing fructose 1 6 bisphosphate if the reverse reaction is not inhibited so this fructose 1 6 bisphosphate is can always take this fructose 1 6 bisphosphate back to fructose 6 phosphate so that has to be prevented in well fed condition how that prevention is done the fructose 2 6 bisphosphate which is increased under the influence of insulin the high concentration of this is it is having a negative influence on fructose 1 6 bisphosphate is and keep the reverse reaction inactive okay so on the one on one side well in well fed condition fructose 2 6 bisphosphate keeps glycolysis active and it keeps gluconeogenesis inactive because we really don't want glucose now so now in well fasting condition what will happen since fasting condition we really need glucose now pyruvate or lactate or any other gluconeogenic substances so they can be taken back to fructose 1 6 bisphosphate and that can be converted to fructose 6 phosphate only if you have active fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase enzyme okay so how this fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase will be active in fasting condition so now in the fasting condition we have already seen glucagon increased that increases cyclic amp that will activate protein kinase a and protein kinase a is going to phosphorylate pfk2 and so pfk2 kinase is phosphorylated phosphatase is phosphorylated as we already know kinase will be inactive when phosphate is added and phosphatase will be active when phosphate is present now under the influence of glucagon pfk2 phosphatase is active so what it does it will convert fructose 2 6 bisphosphate back to fructose 6 phosphate thereby decreasing the concentration of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate so what is the effect of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate on fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase which is participating in gluconeogenesis it is the negative influence of this as we are seeing here so fructose 2 6 bisphosphate it had negative influence of fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase so in the presence of glucagon what happens more and more fructose 2 6 bisphosphate it is converted back to fructose 6 phosphate so its concentration is decreased so when its concentration is decreased so its negative influence of the on this enzyme fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase is taken off now this enzyme it will be free to move on so this enzyme is free now so it will take fructose 1 6 bisphosphate back to fructose 6 phosphate and fructose 6 phosphate can be converted to glucose 6 phosphate and glucose 6 phosphate can be converted to glucose by glucose 6 phosphatase enzyme okay so this is how glucagon will bring lactate to glucose and that's all it uh, it is all because of the action of glucagon on pfk2 kinase and phosphatase so in the well fed condition insulin increases and that acts on pfk2 and keeps kinase active increases fructose 2 6 bisphosphate activate pfk1 and glycolysis is going on at the same time gluconeogenesis will be inhibited whereas in fasting condition glucagon increases protein kinase a increases and that causes phosphorylation of kinase and phosphatase so kinase becomes inactive phosphatase becomes active so what this does phosphatase pfk2 phosphatase removes phosphate from fructose 2 6 bisphosphate and take it to fructose 6 phosphate so when the concentration of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate decreases so its negative influence on fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase is taken off gluconeogenesis will go on on one side at the same time its positive influence on pfk1 is decreased means it is not there so glycolysis will decrease because it is no longer stimulating pfk1 so at the same time glucagon it is activating gluconeogenesis and decreasing glycolysis by this so it will try to increase the blood glucose level okay so this is how insulin and glucagon act on gluconeogenesis and glycolysis simultaneously to maintain the normal blood glucose level thank you